I don't know if anybody's heard this or not, but the House just passed an anti-S bill. This bill has a definition and like 11 different examples of what would qualify as anti-S. The ones Christians should be against and very concerned about is the fact that they say claims of Jews killing Jesus is anti-S. And many Christians are actually supporting this, saying that the Romans were the ones that killed Jesus, not the Jews. Well, in Acts 2, addressing Israel, the men of Israel, the Jews, it says, you yourselves know this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed. You Jews, this is the Jews, you crucified and killed. The Romans were just the tools the Jews used, but it was the Jews that killed him. And this bill wasn't like a few people voted for it or it was close. No, it was a huge majority. 320 people for it, only 91 against it. With 70 of the detractors being Democrats and 21 being Republicans. It's amazing to see that Republicans, which are majority Christians, that's where most of the Christians are, are on the Republican side, have supported this very clear anti-biblical, anti-Christian bill. This is what bad theology does to a nation. The boomers and up have been indoctrinated with this Zionistic mentality, where they don't even realize that this is even a thing. There's just been undeniable support for Israel since it became a nation in 1948. Because everybody had this eschatology of dispensationalism that said the rapture was right around the corner, everything's going to be ending, Israel becoming a nation again is the sign of the end times. This is ridiculous, people. We are denying scripture, going against scripture to support what a horrible view of eschatology is. We're not only saying... The Jews no longer crucified Christ. We're also saying God has two peoples, the Jews and the Gentiles. Ethnic Israel and the spiritual Israel. That's what dispensationalists believe. And I used to be one of them. But that is not what the Bible says all throughout the Bible. There is neither Jew nor Greek. We're all one. That's the point of the grafting into the olive tree. It's one tree one tree, one people of God. There's no Jew, no Greek. We are all children of God. Believers, at least, are all children of God. And I'm not anti-S. I want all Jews to come to Christ, repent of the wicked sin that they're doing. When they became a nation in 1948, it wasn't like, oh, a bunch of like great Jews coming in. No, they were the most atheistic, rebellious, evil people that were in that nation, which how does God bless a nation? God never blessed a nation that was in total rebellion towards him and then given their land back. That never happened in scripture. It was always you obey, you get blessed. You disobey, you're cursed. Somehow they got a blessing by being a curse to God. The most evil people just coming in. And like I keep saying, I'm not anti-S, anti-G. I want them all to come to Christ. Like I want every Muslim to come to Christ. Every whatever, you name it. I want them to come to Christ because he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him, except through Jesus Christ. Our country, America, needs Jesus. Israel needs Jesus. Every nation needs Jesus. Jesus. We need to stop pretending like these people over here are perfect, or these people over here are perfect, or these people over here are chosen so they can do nothing wrong, and we can't say anything about the wrong things they do, or else we're now anti-S. We can't keep doing that. We have to be able to call out sin where sin is, and call people to repentance. If we're not calling out sin, why are people ever going to be expected to repent of that sin? Unfortunately, boomers have been indoctrinated, and I don't want them to all die off. I want them to understand this is the way a lot of millennials and Gen Zers are thinking. We're trying to understand 
what the Bible actually says and not just listen to what somebody said before us. We're not just wanting to blindly accept that. And this isn't me trying to insult boomers either. I'm just saying we need to be able to accept that we've sinned, we've made mistakes. That's the whole point of Christianity, admitting that you made a mistake. You've overlooked something and you need to come to Christ and repent. So hopefully we can right this wrong and not let this bill go any further because it's ridiculous and we should all be standing up and saying, no, this is not biblical. This completely goes against our First Amendment rights in America. The main thing I want us to get out of our head is that it was the Romans that killed Jesus. It was not. It was the Jews that killed Jesus. They were the ones held responsible for it. Why all the blood of the prophets from righteous Abel to Zechariah, son of Berechiah, look it up in scripture, the blood was on that generation of Jews, the ones that crucified Jesus. That is why they were all judged in 70 AD when the entire city was destroyed by the Romans. So let's make sure we let the Bible inform us on how we think about things and think about life rather than letting life dictate how we think about the Bible. And when you have this conversation or share this or whatever, people are still going to come at you and say, no, that's false, that's anti-S, whatever it is. Some people, they're just very indoctrinated and they just can't look past what their bias already is, even if the uh, scripture is clearly just screaming in their face what the truth is. So I just make sure you pray for these people and make sure to keep sharing the gospel so the Jews actually do come to Christ and the Palestinians coming to Christ. We want everybody to come to Christ. And there are Christians, genuine Christians in Palestine and in modern Israel that I don't want to see dead. Really hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure to follow for more and God bless.